Morning guys, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School out here at the Pathfinder classroom here at the school. What I wanted to do today was I wanted to put together a short training video for you today on our ladder back pack frame and net concept. And the reason we do that, there's lots of different bushcraft projects that you can teach at your school. And these are things that we teach in Bushcraft 101 and we use them in the intermediate and continue on to the advanced, making improvements along the way. So we make a simple ladder back pack frame. We do not use a Roy Craft frame. We use a ladder back frame because it has more surface area to carry your load and better distributes the weight of a load. That's the reasoning behind that. And we make a net, a cargo net for this pack frame that will cover the frame and cover your load to help hold it securely on the frame. And then we make shift the straps from something like webbing or rope. So why would you make projects like a makeshift net, a makeshift buck saw, a pack frame, a pump drill of some kind, bow drills? Why are you doing those type projects when it's not something that you would normally want to just, hey, I'm going to the woods and I'm going to make a buck saw. I'm not going to carry one. Hey, I'm not going to carry a pack frame. I'm going to make one. Hey, I'm not going to carry a lighter. I'm just going to make a bow drill fire. Those are not things that you typically would do unless you did them on purpose to practice a skill. And the point to all of this is, is that it teaches you skills within that skill that cross over to everything else. This ladder back pack frame, for instance, has square notches and square lashes. So you're learning construction process while you're making this pack frame. It also would allow you to make shift something if you carried a soft pack into the woods and had to carry a quarter game animal out or something like that. It makes it much easier to carry strapping it to a pack frame like this. A buck saw, the same thing. It teaches you a simple machine in the windlass. It teaches you square notches. It teaches you reduction. It teaches you a lever and fulcrum working in conjunction with the windlass to give you leverage. It teaches you whippings, lashings. It teaches you a shear lash. It also teaches you, again, this windlass device. So there's lots of lessons involved in that small project. And it gives you something you can use in the end. And if for some reason you were to break a pack saw frame of some sort that you were carrying in the woods, then you would know how to makeshift one on the fly if you needed to. The same thing with a pump drill. It's a simple machine that takes advantage of a screw and a counterweight with centrifugal force to accomplish the task of either drilling holes or in something like this larger one, making fire. And all of these things teach you different concepts different simple machines, different ways of constructing things that transfer over to everything else. So what we're gonna to do today is, we're gonna work on this pack frame. We're gonna talk about how to make this pack frame, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make the net for this frame. And when we start off in this class, in these classes, we start off with the most simplistic form of net making, which is just to use a square knot to make your net. And that square knot or reef knot will give you consistency within the net much more than trying to tie overhand knots will. And then eventually we go to the weaver's knot or net making knot where we're actually throwing net and making actual fishing net. So let's walk over here to the net. We'll talk about how that's set up and we'll talk about the ins and outs of that and how to make this and affect this square knot net. All right, so the first thing we have to understand is how we put these pairs of down lines across what's called the head rope. And I've just strung a piece of 36 bank line taut like a ridge line. And I've cut off about an arm's length. I'll just pull this off of here real quick. I've cut off about an arm's length or one fathom or one pull of 36 and doubled it in half. And then we're just putting a lark set over the top of this head rope to give us two lines. So we're gonna do that as many times as we need to to create the amount of meshes we wanna create in this net. So let's talk about how we factor in what size these meshes are gonna be at the end and how many we need because we don't have enough on here at this point for a pack frame. So what we're going to do in the beginning is we're gonna use a mesh gauge. And this mesh gauge is going to be used to make these square knots on top of for our top row. And the rest of them will be eyeballed from that. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the first two sets you've got and you're going to put that mesh gauge kind of in between things, knot to knot, so that you know how wide you want them apart. And so we're making about an inch and a half here 
or a little over an inch, which is going to give us a two inch mesh on this net because it's going to be double the size of this mesh gauge. So we're going to put that on the line right in the center between these two. We're going to take the inside line here and the inside line here. And then we're just going to go, we're going to put this up on top and we're going to go left over right. Snug it up against the gauge so the knot is centered on the gauge, just like that. And then we're going to go right over left. And that's going to give us that square knot that we're going to tie up against that gauge. And then we'll just pull the gauge and we'll move over to the next set, move everything where we need it, put our gauge in. We'll grab the next two down lines and we'll do the same thing. And you're going to get some lines that are in your way, things like that you're going to get confused by if you're not careful because this line is going to have memory in it. So you're going to go left over right and then tight that straight up to the gauge. Get your gauge centered on there just like that. And then you're going to go right over left to make a square knot. And you're going to continue that along this entire top row. Now, understanding how wide these meshes are going to be here is going to tell us how much we need for net lengthwise to cover our pack frame. So if we've got it about an inch and a half here, then we just need to look at our pack frame in conjunction with this to see that we've got enough. Now, all we really need to do here is kind of scoot everything where it belongs, or at least eyeball it up close to where it needs to be, just like this, and then compare it to our pack frame. And if it's as wide as our pack frame, it's going to be big enough. And then we just need to make it deep enough for the frame itself. And one pull of line I've found doubled up makes it just about perfect for this size frame. Okay, when we get to the last one, we don't need the mesh gauge anymore. And this mesh gauge is just a simple sliver of poplar with a slot cut in it with my saw that is about the same thickness as that line to shove on there and make a gauge for that first row of meshes. We'll use that first row to gauge the rest of the meshes going forward. And so now if I were tying regular net, my next knot would be here. And that's fine, but I wanna gauge this first. I wanna make sure that this triangle and this triangle are the same. So I'm gonna go left over right, pull that up and pull down and adjust to where I need to be so that this triangle here and pull down and adjust to where this triangle and this triangle are the same. And then right over left and pull that up into a square knot. And now I can come back to this one and gauge that this knot should be in the same place this knot is. So now I'm going to go left over right, pull that up, and I want it the same place, I want to stretch it out as this knot, and then right over left, And now these two should be the same length when I pull down and pull tight. This and this should be the same length. So I have a mesh here and a mesh here. And these are full meshes, which are twice the size of these meshes. And then I'm just going to continue on to the next two. And then I can come back and tie this one, but I'm going to continue this way first. Go to the next two down lines here that are higher. Left over right. Pull down, gauge my triangle sizes, right over left, tighten it down. Then I can come back to this one here and tie another mesh in here if I want to. Now when you get down to the bottom of this, obviously these square knots are sliders. So take your last string and just tie an overhand knot in there and back that right up against the reef knot, just like that. And so every one of these tags that you've got hanging out, just tie an overhand knot in it and back it up on the reef knot. It won't go anywhere on you that way. Then we're going to remove this 
from the head rope all together. And we'll have a net that'll be a permanent part of our kit. So when you're done with that net, depending on how big the net is and how big your load is, you can now use that net over the top of a load on a pack frame. And you can either stretch it all the way across or stretch it top to bottom or both if you've got a big enough net. Or if it only stretches top to bottom and you've got a big load on here, you can just lace it on with a piece of paracord and that'll work fine too. And you can just go over, under, over, under, over, under through those meshes. Either way will work depending on the size of your net. But now you have a cargo net that you can put things into if you need to, to stuff things in as you're collecting along the way. You can always tuck things in here like tinder and things like that by unstrapping one side, shoving something in the net. You have a big enough mesh in here that you can slide an ax handle in there if you wanted to, to keep an ax on the back of this pack. There's lots of things you can do with this net now from carrying firewood to actually using it as a gilling type net, depending on how large it is. But understanding how to make a net and utilize it for different things is a very important part of this class. And it's why we teach all of these individual projects because they mesh well together and teach a lot of different skills.